What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Falcons Final Whistle Podcast. I'm Scott Baer here with Tori McElhaney and Chris Rim, and I will bet you that you didn't expect to hear that phrasing at the top of a podcast that soon after we just told you, we (laughs) just told you that we were saying goodbye after the season was over, have a nice off season, sign my yearbook, (laughs) KIT. We lied. (laughs) It was like two weeks. We just couldn't stand it anymore. Oh, no. So now we we missed you guys too much. We missed the podcast too much. (laughs) Yeah, no doubt. I think really what it comes down to is Tori McElhaney just wants more mugs, right? I do want more mugs. If anyone wants to send me more mugs, I'm totally fine with that. I have, I got, my parents got me an espresso maker for Christmas. So, like, if anyone wants to send me, any more Dean's favorite mugs and or or merchandise or merchandise. I will happily take all of it. Thank you. <laughs> so Chris, Tori and I, we all huddled up during the off season and uh, we said, you know what? That was so much fun. So much fun. We just got, is that what this. we said? <laughs> um, sure. That sounds like a good story. <laughs> I think as a, I post- like to think that uh, it, w- what we should tell people is we should tell people that, Everyone loved the podcast so much that it was just a mass demand right. for the podcast return. By listener that's, demand. That's, yeah, that's what we need to go with. That's our story. People yeah. were clamoring in uh, Scott Baird's <laughs> bear mail. So he didn't put the questions, but they were just saying, where are the after? Because the way Tori ended the pod, I think she went on like a nice rant about pass rush. So people I sure did. <laughs> really, people needed that content. People needed that. I'm pretty sure it probably went viral somewhere. Who knows? Yeah. Hey, man. And, and hey, you ask, you quote unquote ask, we're going to deliver. What the heck? Uh, <laughs> so we have now the off season edition and version of the Falcons Final Whistle podcast where we're going to tackle a question of the week throughout the course of the off season. We're going to ponder great truths and we're going to break things down in including the first question of the week, which is about Matt Ryan's future with the club. That's not a question that's new, right? That's a question no, that's not. been around for longer than Chris and I have been in this market, I think. Longer right? than or- I've longer than I've been in this market. Like I've only been covering the Falcons for two years, but I've been in the like Atlanta area. So I know it's been a lot longer than we've all been around. Yeah. So we're really gonna break down Matt Ryan's future with the club. We're gonna and we're gonna strip away the stopwatch. The stopwatch will be back next August. We just couldn't pay the stopwatch's royalty fee. It was just. I mean, much. I I can still do some solid uh, sound effects if we need them. I think we're gonna. Chris and I are gonna win on a majority vote of no on that. <laughs> <laughs> Upset! Wow, dagger to the heart to start the off season podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me that the pie, the, or that the sound effects are still coming, whether we request them or, or, or not. Right, yeah. I, I hate to break it to you, but it's a package deal when it comes to me. Uh, but nonetheless, we are going to dissect and try to bring logic and reason to a topic that typically involves throwing tomatoes and screaming at other people from across the aisle or through social media. We're going to give it the old college try, I think, trying to bring some rationality rationality to a topic that doesn't have very much. So we're going to kind of hit a number of different things. Again, uh, no stopwatch, no exact amount of time on each topic, but we're going to talk about Matt's 2021 campaign. We're going to talk about his contract, which plays a major factor in what happens moving forward. We're going to give our big answers, our big reveals midway through this podcast about whether he should return in 2022. So we can also talk about our thoughts on a succession plan. And if a succession plan isn't executed in 2022, what the Falcons do at backup quarterback. But before we get to all that, we have to thank our sponsor, Microsoft Windows 11, the official operating system of the NFL and the Atlanta Falcons. The only Windows 11 is here to bring you closer to what you love, like this Falcons Final Whistle podcast. Learn all about the awesome new features of Windows 11 at windows.com. And a big thank you to Microsoft for sticking around beyond the season. Thank you so much for that. Looking forward to working with Microsoft now and into the future. So awesome. Love it. And, uh, you know, I think that you guys are going to love this. What can be a very polarizing conversation 
shall we say, about <laughs> about Matt Ryan and what we, they should do moving forward. It's also a polarizing conversation about how good he was in 2021. Mm-hmm. And you can throw stats at people and everybody has a different opinion, but nonetheless, just go over his football card, right? As a quarterback, his record, as we all know, seven and 10, he threw for 3,000 968 yards the first time he's been under 4,000 since 2010 20 touchdowns 12 interceptions a 90.4 passer rating which is about on par with where he's been for of of the last five years it's been he was sacked 40 times that's actually shockingly um a that's his lowest total since 2017 if you can believe that or not wow but Uh, but what's the i think he was hit more times though oh yeah he was hit yeah um, I've seen some different numbers, so I'm, I'm loath to, to, to throw out a number, but let's just say that they were all in the triple digits. They were all a league high for quarterback hits. He was under a lot of pressure. So with all that kind of context involved, Chris, what was your take on Matt Ryan's 2021 campaign? Yeah, like I think we talked about before, I think this was the first season where Matt was playing with uh, a, a wide receiving core where he didn't have a first round pick leading that group in the wide receiver core from uh, he had Roddy to Julio and then to Calvin and all the guys in between Sanu, um, you know, Hardy, Jank, whatever, whoever you name it, Gonzalez. Uh, he's always had guys out there, Lamborghinis out there as Lee Smith calls them. <laughs> uh-huh. um, and this season he didn't have that luxury. Um, along with, you know, an an O-line that, you know, he was hit a lot more. And though he says he's been running his whole career and seems like he was running a lot more and, and, um, (laughs) you know, scrambling a lot more. I don't have the specific stats on that. But, um, yeah, and I think considering the situation, I think he did well. I think – I think – I don't think he was playing around, you know, the bottom half of quarterbacks of the league. You know, I also don't think he was playing at, you know, his MVP level. But I think he was still playing – at, you know, a solid kind of middle of the pack level. And, and I think he maximized the, the roster and the players he was playing with. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think it's one of those things I tell people a lot. I'm like, you know, Matt Ryan did the best he could with what he had available. Um, and, and I say that with you knowing that, you know, they didn't have Calvin for the entire year. I think that makes a huge difference. And even, you know, you do kind of substitute in Kyle Pitts and Kyle Pitts is a great target for Matt Ryan. He's going to be a great target for years to come. Uh, But there was a process there. There was a learning curve there that I think Matt and Kyle needed to get on the same page. And, And I think even Matt talked about it a lot throughout the season that once you got towards the back half of the season, like they had much better communication and could kind of like work off of each other really well. I mean, you're also in a brand new system with Arthur Smith. And then of course there were the issues across the offensive line. And the fact that Matt Ryan was hit as many times as he was in the pocket. I mean, Matt Ryan, his game is not to be a running quarterback. I know that we talk about Matty Wills as a joke all the time, but like Matty Wills is like a joke. Like it's, we know what Matt Ryan's game is and it's to stand in the pocket and throw the ball. And so if you're getting hit, with less than a, like two seconds in the pocket, like that's, it's, it's really amazing that Matt Ryan is even still standing and injury free at the end of 2021, considering the hits that he took. But that's beside the point. I think we're kind of already looking ahead to the 2022 season as we should. And, and honestly, when you just kind of look at his contract, if, if that's, because as Scott was talking about before, like that's such a major point of conversation around Matt Ryan. It, it, it almost like the 2021 campaign w- was what it was, but that contract is more of the, the topic of conversation. And, and for me, just kind of looking at it, looking at the numbers on like spot rack or, or, or over the cap, it's just kind of like, this is such a big chunk of money that the Falcons owe Matt Ryan because his deal has been restructured so many times. And I just don't see a way to work around it. If you're wanting to move on from Matt Ryan. Well, let's just take a look at the numbers. I'm staring at over the cap.com and you look at his, his 2022 breakdown again, according to this website, uh, his cap number is a not so small $48.6 million. That's, is 23.3% of this year's cap. It also comes with 
a dead money hit if they were to move on from him at uh, 40 million. There's an $8 million cap savings in 2023. It gets a bit more manageable, 15 million in dead money. His cap number is still incredibly high at 43.6 million with $28 million in cap savings. Um, when we, I'll be honest here, guys. We recorded this much of the podcast already before my computer decided to spontaneously combust. And it was really bad. <laughs> Not yeah, good. Nearly, I mean, I didn't cry, but it was close. I almost uh, did. <laughs> because we come to this point in the conversation. And the reason why I say all that is to give Chris Rim some credit here is that when the first time that we did that, I listed all those numbers and I didn't include the the pre and post June one designations if they were to move on from him. And I think that given what these numbers are, Tor, you have them in front of you, right? Yeah. You um, want me to tell? Yeah. Because these play a factor in what we, in, in how this needs to be evaluated. Yeah. So if you trade Matt Ryan pre June 1st, he would carry a dead cap hit of 40.5 million. Um, but you would have him off the books in 2023. Um, but then if you trade him post June 1st, uh, that splits the dead money hit over two years. So 24.9 million in 2022 and then 15.6 million in 2023. And that 15.6 million is pretty on par to if we're if we're wanting to use a real world example, the Falcons oh, around that for Julio in 2022. That's his dead cap or right. it's his dead hip. Yeah. Right. So when you evaluate all those numbers, right, Chris, I, mean, I know there's a lot of numbers probably floating around. in a So many numbers. <laughs> uh, but but just generally, when you evaluate the the uh, contract, I mean, I think that the first instinct is it's impossible. Look at that dead money hit. Maybe with the June one designation, maybe it's not. I mean, Arthur Smith said never say never. So never say never. I don't know. How are you looking at uh, at all that? Yeah, as I as I said when we first recorded this, I think and, and before, I think well, I preface this by saying I like I said before, I, I think Matt should stay. I think the best option would be to keep him on the team. But like I said, it's not I think sometimes people make it seem like it's impossible. Like there's no way that the Falcons could ever get rid of him. But that's just not the case. Like if they if they want to move on from Matt, there's a situation where they could cut their losses and it not be the biggest cap hit in NFL history. Um, the Eagles still have that. I grew up in Philadelphia. I saw the Carson Wentz drama firsthand. Um, that was a $33 million cap hit. It was the biggest in NFL history. Um, and the Eagles made the playoffs and the team they traded him to didn't, and they got a first rounder. And now they have three in, in this year's draft. So there's there are ways to, I think, maneuver. The, obviously, that was a completely different situation. A guy asked out. Matt has been clear that he doesn't want out. So the, I, uh, the Eagles definitely didn't want to do that, but they had to do it. So I say all that to say it's not impossible. And um, the June 1st designation makes it. So it's a little bit less where it's 24, you say, Tori, instead of yeah. 40, 48 or 40. Yeah. 40 yeah yeah, 40. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's 24.9 instead of 40.5 yeah so so yeah that, that that's basically what i would say you know never say never and, and i don't think it's impossible but i think the best bet would be to build around a guy who is still playing good football and you have veterans also if you get rid of matt and you bring in you know maybe someone from this year's draft to be evaluators have said None of them seem to look like surefire guys, at least in year one, or um, take some time to develop. I think that would th – there would be guys on the team who wouldn't like that, veterans like Grady Jarrett or, you know, guy, guys who want to win. Um, that might turn them off and make them want to want to play elsewhere or look elsewhere if things feel like it's a rebuild. Yeah, yeah. I think it's – oh, go ahead, Scott. Go ahead, go ahead. No, you do it. I mean, I was just going to say, like, I completely agree that, it, you know, while it's not impossible, I think it's it, it's one of those things where it's like there are more that we have to talk about here besides just the money. The money is like 75 percent of the conversation because it has to be. But there's also the whole idea of a, of having a, a plan in place for when Matt Ryan is no longer your quarterback. And, and like Chris was saying, I also am in the belief that I don't know. And granted. I haven't done my complete draft review of all the draftable guys this year, as I normally do. I'm about to go on vacation, y'all. So, like, I'll do that when I get back. 
and then you'll get all of my draft content. Don't worry. I know everybody is waiting with bated breath for that. Um, she says sarcastically, uh, <laughs> but, but what I will say is like, I agree that as of right now, I don't see a, a, an opportunity to draft someone and immediately have them come in. That's not something that I feel like is, is a workable solution for me. I, I tend to agree that what you got to do is, is you understand the situation that Matt Ryan presents with his contract. Honestly, just do what you got to do to, to, to make that manageable, but build up around Matt Ryan so that one day when you do get a quarterback into Atlanta, that's going to take over for Matt Ryan, whether it be through free agency or through the draft, you have a team around him that can support his, you know, learning curve, if that's what kind of what we want to call it, that can support his growth. Because if you have a rebuilding team and a rebuilding quarterback, that's not really a recipe for success for any team anywhere in any league. So I think that's kind of where my mind is at. If, if you're not even just thinking about the contract and you're just kind of thinking about the next steps for the Falcons post Matt, post the Matt Ryan era. There's an element of uh, of how a quarterback does in the NFL. It's not 100%, but there's an element of that success plan, not a success plan, not a, a, a succession plan that involves the organization that you go to, the coach you fall into, the scheme you fall into, the team around you. We've seen some guys who can chuck at 70 yards and, 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 and hit a dime bust who are drafted in the top 10 of which yeah. there are a lot of top 10 quarterbacks that don't go according to plan. And you see some of these guys, they come into good situations and they are, they're able to hit the ground running. And I think that's a huge advantage. And if you're trying to execute a plan, now this is an extreme example, right? Because they had the number one pick, but to go from Manning to luck, right. Or from <laughs> Favre to Rogers, right? Those things don't happen very often, but to get yourself in the best possible position, you want that younger player to come in and not a la David Carr, right? Or even Justin Fields, where they're literally running for their life and they're not, they're playing to borrow Arthur Smith's term, they're playing survivor. They're not playing football. They're just trying to live. Yeah. And I, I think that, that part of that goes into it. So why not take advantage of a draft that doesn't have uh, a bunch of quarterbacks that, that deserve top 10 picks, no matter where they're uh, selected and build up the team as much as you can around him on, on offense and defense and give Matt the best chance to succeed and give the, the quarterback of the future, the best chance to succeed. So in my opinion, my vote is you you can't renegotiate the, the, this deal again and again and again. So eat right. it, swallow the pill, Go with Matt Ryan. He gives you the, he gives you the, the, the best chance to win. And he, if you continue to build up this roster, he gives the next guy the best chance to win. Matt's under contract for two years. You don't have to force it. Um, so it seems like we all kind of feel like unless an, op, unless an offer, and like maybe even an Eagles, Colts type offer blows you away, you want to keep him here. Does that sound accurate? Um, if that's the case, Chris, or anybody, does that prevent, if Matt Ryan's here, does that prevent you from drafting a quarterback high? You still have a depth chart to fill out at quarterback. Could you execute the succession plan and still keep Matt, Matt Ryan around? I don't know. Do you draft a quarterback at all in 2022? That's my question. Or do you kind of kick the can down the road for one more year? Yeah, I mean, I think... I think again, like I think in terms of succession plan in, in 2022 drafting a quarterback, I think it depends on who they like. Um, it sure. depends on who they like. So if you like, if you think that there's potential, again, if you think there's potential that, because I don't think they're going to draft a quarterback in the first round. If they did, yeah. I think people would be up in arms with that. <laughs> the the uh, um, dumpster fire that is Falcons Twitter would actually explode. I think. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah. And I don't. And I don't think. Um, I don't think they would use a. Why? Like I said, don't. Like I said, I keep talking about the Eagles. I didn't think the Eagles were going to use Jalen Hurts in the second round when they had other needs. So I don't know. <laughs> never say never. Yeah. I'm not in. I'm not in their heads. But when you look at the guys, right? It's. Uh, it's Matt Corral, Kenny Pickett, Malik Willis, 
Carson Strong from Nevada, Sam Howe, and Desmond Ritter. And Ritter has a fourth round grade. All the other Corral to Willis have first round grades. Strong and Howe have second round grades. So uh, according to most places, like, and uh, the one I'm looking at now is CBS Sports. So I guess what I'm saying is, do you think, like, would you use a second on a quarterback when you could, when you're in a, a deep pass rush draft, when you could get a pass rusher possibly in the, in the second round or, you, you know what I mean? Or, or would you um, use a pick on Desmond Ritter maybe later in a draft if you think he has a potential to do that? Or do you just want to wait next year um, and try with that crop of QBs or looking or, or not even draft one at all? And when Matt's, Matt's, you know, on his way out, you try and trade for a quarterback who's maybe been around the league, who's a little bit younger. I think a succession plan would be probably the best option, like having a guy behind Matt who can just fill in the role. I know people kind of use that Patrick Mahomes example too much. Like it just, that just happens like that. But I think, you know what I mean? It doesn't doesn't work, just work like that. But I think it's the best, I think it's definitely the best way to go to just get a guy, sit him, um, for however long, unless he shows you that he's he's prepared um, or, or or better than the guy you have, um, especially when you have a, a a guy like Matt who is who seem he seems to be from the outside in, just like a good professional. That's what everyone says about yeah. him. He goes about things the right way. So you teach a guy the right way to go about things, and then have him take the reins um, in in his second year or, or third year. So all in all, I'm saying I'm not sure about a succession plan in 2022 with what the evaluators are saying about this, this quarterback class. But I think a succession plan is the best option. And that, that could come next year. I don't know about this year. Yeah, it's, um, I look at it and, and just to take a quarterback, just to take one, you start moving into the later rounds, I, I think. And again, it all depends on what they think. If they fall in love head over heels with somebody, just because this is a, a thinner class or whatever, if you fall head over heels in love. You want to start sending Valentines to somebody, then you just go move heaven and earth to get them. That's it. You just do it. But it, I don't see a point in, well, we're, that we're not going to take a quarterback high, so we'll just take one in the fifth or sixth round and try to develop them. In, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Right. I don't want to waste those picks because those picks can turn, turn into Russell Gage and Foye Aluokin, right? Yeah. And I, I think the odds of doing that are better outside of the quarterback position. You could get somebody who can help you right away. So I think bottom line, I'm, I side with, 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 with Chris that a succession plan is the right way to go. I think 2023 is the right time. If, if we're talking about in a vacuum, in a perfect world, 2023 is the right time to do it. Uh, so that's my vote there. Tori, you, uh, your vote. And if we all agree that we got to figure out who's going to be the backer. So, so honestly, like, I guess I will play kind of devil's advocate here and kind of go away from the secession plan and go towards like the free agency market and look at 2023, 2024, and who is available, what moves you could make, what, tra- like if, if someone wants to trade for a guy, I mean, we're, I, I just kind of look at this past year and this is actually a conversation that I was having um, with Will McFadden on the Falconaholic podcast. Um, not too long ago, um, but we were talking about this whole idea of Matt Ryan, and and we were talking about the <laughs> this whole idea that quarterbacks are moving around this league in a way that I don't know if we've really seen. Like we we are seeing guys move to different teams. I mean, and and not staying where they were drafted, and and bringing guys in, and and making all these really big time deals for quarterbacks. And I think just in the last year and a half, two years, we've seen some major quarterback moves uh, across the league. So if that is a trend that continues, why couldn't the Falcons be in the conversation to bring a guy um, from another team, make a trade uh, for, a, a, you know, you think about like the Matthew Stafford example, you know, like why couldn't the Falcons do something like that when they're in a better position per the cap and, and bringing in guys from the 2022, 2023 draft that they've developed, you know, I think How that's about also this, Tori? If you, let's think about this. What did the Tennessee Titans do when they had a number two overall draft pick and then they traded for Ryan Tannehill And who was the offensive coordinator when they made the switch (laughs) in season? Right. It was was Arthur Smith. Smith. It It was was funny. I totally interrupted what you were 
No, no, you're say. good. But I had this whole argument against you walking in be like, <laughs> they're going to want a younger quarterback. Arthur Smith will want a chance to start this regime with a guy that he can develop. And then I was like, well, Arthur Smith just worked your argument, dude, like because he did it the other way. So right. to your point, which I think is a good one, is that we can't just eliminate that on spec. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think like, that's why I, I brought it up is because I was like, you know what, like, this is something that I think could happen. This is definitely something I think they would weigh in, in this conversation about what do we do after the Matt Ryan era. And so that I'm going to throw that on the table. I'm not saying that that's like my vote. I'm just throwing it out there to give people something to think about. Yeah. And I think hopefully what everybody's taken from this conversation is that there are a lot of things to think about. And I know that at times when fans hear Arthur Smith say, never say never, or he doesn't want to make a commitment in December about an action that would happen in April or May <laughs> or in 2023, you know, you know, like down the line, right? He's basically saying never say never, even though we think, and I think it's a good and solid educated guess that Matt Ryan's going to be the, the quarterback in 2022, that look at all these options that we've discussed, right? I, I think that the deeper that we dove into it, the more we think about, okay, post June one, cr crazier things have happened. Okay, they have to draft somebody in the top 10 to, you know, to have a, a succession plan. Well, do they, or can they go find a veteran? I, I think that deep down, Arthur's right, right? Is that anything can happen here. They've got options, they've got mobility, and they have a front office that is not so hard-headed that they're willing to evaluate all of these different opportunities. Um, that's what makes this conversation fun. And hopefully y'all enjoyed it because we're <laughs> gonna be doing these things on a regular basis. Um, I encourage everybody to do what we always ask them to do, five-star rating review all that fun stuff for the falcons final whistle um any final thoughts from the group i i think i ended this without telling you guys i was going to end it <laughs> uh, no 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 i, I think like y'all just like keep up with the podcast because i think this is going to be a fun exercise for us too to kind of talk about our thoughts and feelings about all of this and and honestly like tweet us your thoughts about the podcast and kind of what you want us to talk about like scott was talking about uh, if, if you want to send us any recommendations of things you want to hear on the podcast, definitely tweet us, slide into the Instagram DMs, uh, do what you got to do to get your questions answered. Because we are honestly, I, I, I would like to think that we're going to do this like all off season. So we have a lot of topics that we can kind of go over. So anything that you guys want to listen to, um, just let us know. Yeah. Let's and it, just, just make sure you aren't asking Tori if the Falcons are going to resign CP. Here's the thing. You can do that. Here's the thing. You can do, you can ask me all day long if the Falcons are going to re-sign CP. Do not do it when we are talking on a dating app. Okay. I, <laughs> I, I am back on the dating app. I'm dead. I'm dead. And I am back on the dating apps after taking the season off. And what I will say is, I don't know if y'all saw, if y'all follow me on Twitter, I've already gone on this rant, but I'm about to do it again because Chris brought it up. I match with like I don't know like 10 different guys on the dating app and five of the 10 <laughs> five of the 10 ask me if the Falcons are going to re-sign CP and honestly I'm just going to tell them like y'all listen to the podcast when we talk about that I'm not answering that on this like you can ask me about um my uh favorite uh tv show or what I like to do on a date do not ask me about the Falcons <laughs> Another, another I'm viable rant. I'm legitimately crying right I now. Like, I was so so <laughs> <laughs> This it's is the red. stuff that you can only get on the Falcons Final Whistle podcast. Only, <laughs> wow, Chris <laughs> Rem, what a what a closer topic. That was amazing. <laughs> Tori, thanks for telling the story. Thank you all for listening. I need to recover. I need a minute. <laughs> 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 thank you guys so much for uh listening to this one more more antics more football conversation coming up <laughs> next week talk to you later